Next is body copy. So this is just a fancy way to say the rest of the words on your page, right? Uh, there's no minimum number of words that you need on your page, but I usually try to have at least 100 words. Um, it's not a hard and fast rule. I've definitely seen 50 word pages outrank 500 word pages. But the, the simple way to think about this is like, it, it's really hard for Google to understand what your page is about if there's not enough content, if there's not enough text. This is a huge problem at Airbnb. Um, we really care about the user experience. We're a very image heavy site. It is really hard to convince a search engine that a particular page is about a certain city accommodation type, right? Designers are constantly trying to remove text and remove content from the page, kind of take the minimalist approach, and it's very, very difficult to optimize a page without any content, right? Uh, there's many other factors at play here. Uh, the keyword that you're targeting should, should be mentioned probably two to three times. You don't really need to do it much more than that. Um, should include synonyms. And there's two things I wanted to point out here. If, if, if people ever mention to you keyword density or text to code ratio, you run away from them. Because it is a factor that no longer matters. Uh, it, it, people brought it up a lot like 10 years ago. They would say, oh, you're, you know, your, key, your keyword needs to be mentioned at least 15% of the time. And, and that's just not how major search engines work anymore. So the rule of thumb, right, is that if it's really hard to work in your keywords, it's probably the wrong page. This happened to me a lot. I messed this up a lot when I was first starting. I would have a page and I would be like, okay, how do I get the keyword, right, how to start a fraternity into this, right? And it, like, if, it, if you're having that conversation and it's really hard and it sounds awkward, it's the wrong page. You probably need to create a new page or pick a different type of page to optimize. And the rule of thumb is to design for users. A very simple way to catch yourself is to read it out loud. If you read your content out loud and it doesn't sound weird, you're probably good. Definitely worth doing. And then keyword stuffing, do the, doing these kinds of tricks can sometimes give you what's colloquially called a Google slap when you break the rules and you get a, get a penalty from Google and you lose rankings, right? So keyword stuffing can induce a Google slap. I have been Google slapped many times. <laughs> I no longer get Google slapped. Um, the, I feel like every, every SEO that's been in the game long enough has to get Google slapped at least once to see kind of where the line is. Um, yeah, really good question. So is a Google slap a automated algorithm or a manual one? Um, it's both. So there are algorithmic penalties where Google can kind of automatically detect you're doing something malicious um, and, and penalize you based on that. But they also do manual review. They have an incredibly robust manual review process where they have guidelines. And the guidelines usually get leaked. You can actually read the Google Quality Rater guidelines and see what they're looking for. Uh, but they're asking the, the, the reviewers simple questions like, would you send this site to a friend? Would you trust it with your credit card? Um, does, it, does it sound strange when you read it out loud? Like Things like that where it's just, it's way better and more efficient to have humans do it rather than, than robots, right? So um, the answer is both. There's algorithmic penalties like Panda and Penguin and some of the other updates we talked about, and there's manual ones as well. Um, so Google, in Google Webmaster Tools, there's a cons, or it's called Google Search Console now, and they have a, a messaging system where they can actually tell you if they've, if they've penalized you. Um, so they'll, they'll let you know if you've gotten the penalty and the things you can do to try and reverse it. They've gotten much better at it now. I mentioned Google slaps and Google penalties and if people get like really concerned about it, most people won't, most people here won't, you won't do the things that will get you a penalty now, right? Like you have to be pretty aggressive these days to get one. Um, you can do things, uh, we'll talk more about negative SEO and this whole kind of bizarre industry that's, that's, that's arisen from all this, but um, yeah, the way before, before Google was messaging stuff out is uh, we track rankings with third-party rank tools, and I, the, minute, the minute I knew I was Google slapped was my traffic went from 500 visitors a day to 10, <laughs> and my rankings went from many rankings in the top one to not in the top 100, so, um, but this was a while ago. This would have been 2009. 
Yeah, so the um, question is how long did it take to recover? So it really depends. Um, it depends on what type of penalty you've induced. Um, for, for our particular site, we never recovered. Um, and we just kind of moved on. <laughs> for other sites, it, it really depends. So there, we'll talk more about it later, but there's a tool now where you can uh, to disavow links. Um, if you get a lot of low quality links, pointing to your site, you can essentially tell Google what they are and beg for forgiveness, right? <laughs> like, hey, don't count these anymore kind of thing. Um, it really, really depends. Some people specialize in link penalty removals now, and like there's agencies you can go to to try and, and lift penalties. So um, there's high profile cases as well. Thumbtack recently, the startup here in San Francisco, got a huge penalty and got it lifted within two days. Um, that was like the fastest ever, but it was, um, I hate this answer, but it depends. <laughs> yes? Can you talk a little bit about, like, um, like you said you had to be pretty aggressive to get slapped. Um, what kind of strategies, like, were you doing when you got slapped? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So how aggressive, how aggressive is too aggressive, right? Which means you're going to be a good SEO. <laughs> um, so for us, we were we were doing. Um, it was when I first got involved. I first started learning about search engine optimization, and we were we were being spammers. Um, we were we were posting lots and lots and lots of blog comments and and forum posts and guest articles on things that were in, completely unrelated to our topic. Um, so. Like, we were probably doing 10 to 30 links a day on unrelated websites, which is a lot, which, which was not good. And so Google was absolutely right to, um, to knock us down on that. And I think the algorithm was much less refined then as well. This would have been five years ago at this point. So um, yeah, we'll talk more about some of the link building strategies in general. Uh, but it, it's... Um, what we were doing was clearly wrong. <laughs> yeah. So, so body copy, right? So yeah, when we're talking about body copy, it's just a fancy way to say the rest of the text on the page. We don't need to go into that too, too much more, right? But that's just the general idea is that Google's getting very, very good at understanding this stuff. Old school search engines looked at keyword density as a thing. It's not a thing anymore. And it, 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 it's a ridiculous notion, actually, to think that it ever was a thing. Like, oh, this page is more relevant for this keyword because that keyword is mentioned more times, right? And you can think about how the weird behaviors that would come from webmasters in doing that, right? So Google got really good at understanding this. You don't need to do it anymore.